All right, I think we are live. What's going on, YouTube? And welcome to Goal Line Hockey. It is Kevin Forte, and today we are watching the Islanders versus Rangers game. And uh, hopefully, a bunch of you are able to get in here. Unfortunately, we are having problems with the connection here. Um, and also, this is a this is a long stream. If I do the entire game. Um, my computer battery, I don't think, would be able to do a full game, three-hour live stream. Um, so that's kind of why things went the way they did. So apologies if anybody was affected by that. Um, so right now, we've got a tie game. Uh, the both times that I kind of stepped away from watching this game, the Islanders scored. One of them counted, one of them didn't. The key to this game so far, uh, Shesterkin and Sorokin both playing very well. That's very nice to see. You want to see that for both teams. If any, if there is one thing that is more important than anything in this game for both teams, it's that both those guys are playing well. So that's the first thing. The second thing, special teams. The Islanders, listen, I talked about in my video the other day, how the Islanders, you know, don't get a ton of calls. The Rangers tend to get calls. The Islanders got fair calls today. They are terrible on the power play. And it got to the point they had a four-minute power play between the end of the first period into the second. I would have rather just taken that back. Just don't even give the power play. He took a penalty. We don't even want the power play. Just keep it five on five. Because the way the Islanders play on the power play is abysmal. And Brock Nelson in particular was horrible. <laughs> What's going on, Irvin? Yeah, and it is. It's a physical game. It's really good to see both teams playing better. I mean, the Islanders don't really look that good in my opinion. They got the goal here. But, so anyway, so we get into the second period. So it's a four-minute power play for the Islanders. Bortuzzo uh, got high stick by Kako. Then the Islanders get another power play late, which is a boarding penalty, which some irony there, Ranger fans. Remember the boarding Trocek penalty? Remember that, that call that was a penalty? Well, now you don't want it to be a penalty. What do you want? So um, so anyway, that's a call. And the Rangers score a shorthanded goal because the Islanders are terrible on the power play. Terrible. But shout out to the Rangers. Really good kill for that entire thing they embarrassed the islanders power play so shout out to them honestly because <laughs> they put the islanders they put the islanders to shame on their power play opportunities um and yeah and then the islanders got a goal 42 seconds after that first ranger goal and then it got taken back it was kind of questionable but i think the the upstairs review has a better view to actually see the puck and the skate you know the skate going over the skate going over before the puck did so i think that is why that was called you know they need conclusive evidence to say that it is no it is offside and i think they did um and then the Islanders ended up scoring later on anyway to tie the game so you know what i will give the Islanders credit they're being resilient they're staying in this game despite the rangers really outplaying them they cannot take penalties if the Islanders take a penalty or two here it's a wrap. I, I really, I think the Islanders have just, they look slow. I don't know what happened, but um, they're still hanging in there. And that's all you could ask for. Yeah, so Lyonzi would not like to meet the Islanders in the first round. Absolutely. That's the thing. The Islanders are just a pest. And people don't understand that. You know, I think most Ranger fans respect that because they've had to deal with the Islanders all season. But the Islanders show up for the games against the Rangers. They do. Even in a loss, they show up. Interference on that goal, it was, I don't know. I don't know, Urban. It was questionable. It's worth the question, but I think it would have still been a goal. Oh, I see what you're saying. So the interference calls you offside. Oh, yeah, I think so. Absolutely. But that's the kind of stuff they let go. I, and I don't know. That's why it's one of those things. The officiating is just weird. It's very inconsistent. And that's what's frustrating, right? 
that's the gamesmanship of being too close. Well, then they'd say, well, Palmieri, why was Palmieri so close that he got interfered with? I, I don't know. The offside rule of the NHL is way too strict. I hate seeing goals called back due to it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And it, it did take way too long to review that. Absolutely. I've gained a new level of respect for Ranger fans this week because I took I put out that video and I was thinking, I was like, I'm expecting Ranger fans to give me shit. I have my Islander hat on, I'm going to criticize the Rangers and they're going to blast me for it. A lot of you guys were really like, yeah, the Rangers, and then they played that game against the Flyers, which just pretty much said everything that I already said. It just explained it out, out loud. And um, you guys are awesome. I will give credit to the Ranger fans for that because... I give credit. I give criticism to other teams, and they don't take it too well. I will give credit where it's due on that. I mean, right now, I, I really don't know. What do you guys think in terms of a score? What would be your score prediction right now? Because this seems like the type of game I could see each team scoring one more goal and we see like a 3-2 game. Whether it goes to overtime or the end of regulation, we see a goal late in the final five minutes. I'm going to say... I'm going to say 3-2 final. I don't even... I can't even predict who's going to win the game. But I'm, that's based off how this game is kind of going right now. That's what I would expect. I don't think anybody, even the players, knew what to expect coming into this game. Would we see a brawl off the faceoff to start the game? Were we going to see some sort of just crazy scoring back and forth? Because Shesterkin and Sorokin have been better recently. But they have had their games where they give up a lot of goals. So you just you didn't really know what to expect. And Rempe back in the lineup. Dobson out for the Islanders. He got hurt last game. How much of the bl the bad blood from Wednesday was going to come over into this game? I, I don't know. Actually, the game might have been Tuesday. So a wild video went. Urban, I am planning on doing a Minnesota wild video. Um... Once the regular season comes to an end, it's all playoffs. But I do want to talk about the teams that got eliminated. And I think I might do an entire live stream just talking about teams that were eliminated. And I'm going to let you guys kind of talk about the teams that were eliminated. So I think I'm going to do something like that next week. But it's between Arizona. I just made three Coyotes videos today because this whole thing with Utah is really a, a big deal. And um, it's one of those things where I think the Utah thing dominates everything else, especially right before the playoffs, which sucks. But I, I have to get those videos out. And then as we get like to next Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, it's going to be more so playoffs and, and things like that. So I'm just not ready to talk about the teams that are eliminated quite yet. Getting bounced in the first round, Rangers, if power play dries up. Yeah. That's that's true. And that's the thing, though. Some of that isn't even really in your control because in the playoffs, we just see the penalty calls. They don't want the referees don't want to end the games. And there are a lot of games recently where the Rangers have been winning those games. They've been scoring those late power play goals. You might not get those in the playoffs. You can't rely on them. And that's and obviously seeing, you know, what is it now? It's. You know, technically that's a shorthanded goal. So five on five, they still cannot score. They're they're scoring. They're playing better on the penalty kill than they are on five on five for some reason. It, it's just so wild how that's kind of been going for the Rangers. Their special teams. I think it's all mental. I think mentally they just feel really good on the special teams, whether it's power play or penalty kill. And for the Islanders, it's the literal opposite. They get on the power play, they're like, ah, oh, shit, here we go. And they just there's no structure. It doesn't seem like they really know what they're doing. I don't know. So there's three minutes left here in the second period. We're still tied at one. And uh, for the Rangers, this game means President's Trophy. If they want to win the President's Trophy, got to win today. Carolina's got two games the rest of the way against Chicago and Columbus. One of the easiest schedules left in the league. And the way the Hurricanes have been playing, that should be three or four points. 
And then for the Rangers, it's not necessarily that easy, right? They have they have the Islanders tonight. I don't remember who they play next week. If I'm, I'm trying to remember who the Rangers play, I don't remember now. Because they played the Flyers, they played the Islanders. I want to say Ottawa's on the schedule. Like the Rangers play Ottawa one more time, but. It is the Sens, okay, yeah. I remembered the Senators when I went to one of their games a couple weeks ago, but I don't remember the other team. The Senators and somebody else, but I think that's on the road. It might be... I See, I don't want to throw a team out there because I don't know for certain. frustrating game for Horvat. Um, he had a couple good opportunities, but he just couldn't tee off on the one-timer at least twice. He had two one-timers he couldn't get off and toward the net. So I'm hoping for a better third period from Horvat. I, if I'm going to predict someone to score a goal in this game, I think Horvat's going to get a goal in the third. And that'll be my prediction for the rest of this game because everything else, I have no freaking idea. But it sounds like there's a decent amount of Islander fans there at the Garden today. So hopefully everybody's being cordial, at least for now. Hopefully there's not a ton of fighting and BS, but you never know. I can't imagine that game on St. Patrick's. I don't know if anyone went to that game, but that game on St. Patrick's Day between the Islanders and the Rangers at the Garden, I could only imagine everybody was probably so slammed going into that game. I'm sure there was fights and other BS because... You have that many rowdy people that don't like each other's fan bases. And how crazy would it be if the Islanders and Rangers played each other in the first round of the playoffs? I honestly don't know if I'm ready for that. I Honestly... I saw, I think the other day, tickets are already going for like $450 for Bud Light Blue Seats, which is the 400s at the Garden. It's $450 a piece. Brawl in the streets in New York. Hell yeah. That's on any given day, though, Urban. I'm sure you know that. And now they're showing the President's Trophy. Teams that win the President's Trophy, how they don't tend to do so well in the playoffs. Oh, my God. That was a close call. No way, Nelson! And the Islanders in the dying seconds of the second period make it 2-1. Oh my god. And that was given Nelson. Nelson needed that goal because he was in he was responsible for that second goal. Uh the first goal the Rangers scored. That was all on Nelson. Bad turnover. Oh man, the Ranger fans are gonna be pissed at. Oh no, that wasn't Truba. I thought that was Truba. That was a great play by Hudson Fashing, though. Wow. Tampa round one starting at 130 currently. Hey, what's going on, Mitchell? This could potentially be if Tampa gets far enough, right? This could be one of the teams they play in the conference final, maybe, right? We could maybe see a rematch of the, what is that, 2020, 2021, 2022, 2023? Eastern Conference Final, maybe, between Tampa and the Rangers or Tampa and the Islanders. You never know.
That's a deflating goal for the Rangers, though. Oof. Wow. So the Islanders escape the second period. Wow. Whew. That's wild. There's a lot of Islander fans there, too. Wow. Yeah, true, but I know uh, the other night, Ranger fans were really... The blame game went really between after the Flyers game. I was kind of scrolling through Ranger's Twitter and... Or X, whatever it's called. And a lot of Ranger fans were upset with Truba, but they were more so upset with LaViolette because of some of the decisions LaViolette made, you know, keeping Rempe out of the lineup, which I'm more on board with than a lot of ranger fans i think if they really look at like if they go to games in person it's more noticeable rempy when he skates around i feel bad the kid he's probably a very good kid and stuff he looks like a giraffe on skates and he doesn't really have the coordination skating wise and i, I don't know how else to describe it but he doesn't look like he fits and if you have to put him in or Jack Roslovic, I kind of agree with putting in Roslovic. And I know that he's had his problems with the Rangers so far this year, but the LaViolette hate was very strong from Rangers fans. And it's funny because when Ranger, when the Rangers win games, it's the best feeling in the world. They're like, we're going to win the cup this year. This is our year. And when they lose a game, it's like the end of the world. But I think... It's more so, I understand the principle, right? Because it's the lack of that getting up for a game that, against the Flyers, you think should be an easy win. They're on an eight-game losing streak. We should dominate these guys, no problem. But they just, it doesn't seem like, and they were just talking about it, Subban, Messier, and the other guy, uh, the anchors on, on TNT, they were kind of talking about how you got to win those puck battles. And that's been a problem for the Rangers, you know, that's why they're so good on the power play, is they have possession of the puck. They're kind of swinging it around, skating around, you know, zipping the puck, passing. They're very good at that. Something the Islanders are terrible at. It's the literal opposite. These two teams are so opposite of each other, it's hysterical. The Rangers are so good on the perimeter, passing it, receiving it, no problems. The Islanders can't even sometimes make a simple pass to each other. But they win those gritty puck battles in the front of the net or behind the net. And that's kind of why these teams are still so close is because what one team is so good at the other team is terrible at and vice versa so i'm really interested to see if these teams play in the playoffs how that goes over because if the rangers don't win this in four or five games we have a hell of a series on our hands and i expect that honestly i don't know how else to describe it and that's what happens when you are where the rangers are at is they're a team that is in pretty comfortable position now for a couple weeks. And it's only human nature to feel comfortable. All right, we made the playoffs. It's been a long season. We got through February. We got through January. We got through a couple of stretches. We didn't play our best hockey. And here they are. And then you kind of let off the gas at the end. And then boom. And now you start losing games you shouldn't be losing. And now you feel like everything's 
falling. The sky is falling, right? The, the, the ceiling at the garden is falling in on itself and everything's going to shit. Well, it's not necessarily that bad, but I don't know. I think it's, it's the combination of Laviolette's decisions with some of the guys he's bringing in and out and um, just the way they kind of run things. But I don't know. I'd love to know what you guys think of that. Nurse, yeah, and that's the same thing. Darnell Nurse is very similar to that. And thank God they have Evan Bouchard up there in Edmonton because he is so... Evan Bouchard and Matthias Ekholm have stabilized the defense there. And it looks more similar to a Rangers blue line, right? Because you still have Adam Fox, you have Keandre Miller. Um, they have some really good defensemen there. And I think the Ranger fans really like seeing... Uh, what's his name? Is it Braden? It's not Braden Schneider. It's the other young defenseman. He's been kind of in and out of the lineup. Um, I'm sure one of you guys will will know who I'm talking about. I'm trying to remember his name. Oh, it's not Braden Schneider. That's going to annoy me. Let me see if I can find it. I don't even know if he's playing today. I think because Gustafson's playing, he might not even be in. Uh, Schneider? No. Yeah, so he must be scratched. going to bother me. I'm going to know it right away. I'm going to be like, how did I not know that? Oh, come on. Hedl and Wheeler. So he's not even on the roster. Did they send him down? He's like a little defenseman um, on the Rangers. He's like a little guy. At least compared to some of the other ones on the Rangers. I'm looking on Cap Friendly now. Let's see if I can find him. I assume they sent him down. Zach Jones. That's who it is. Zach Jones. And he's not playing today. And he's a good skater. He is like a little speed demon, that guy. I really like Zach Jones for the Rangers. He kind of reminds me of like a younger version of like uh, Nick Luddy or Eric Carlson. I know that's a big comparison, but you get what I mean. He's like an offensive defenseman, maybe more similar to even like a, a Quinn Hughes um, in today's game. He's very quick. And Kel McCarr, I mean, not to that level. You get what I'm saying, though. He's, he's a very speedy, quick defenseman. And he kind of like weaves his way around guys. Yeah, I I remember the day they signed Barkley Goudreau to that three point six million. I was like, that's that's a little bit much. Yeah, Zach Jones, that's who I was thinking of. And he's kind of been up and down with Hartford this year, so I wasn't sure if he was on the roster or not. He's also been scratched. It's kind of hard to track him. He's either scratched playing for a game or two, or he's in Hartford. So it's been one of those years for Jones. I think he'll be a regular more next year. Because I don't think they're going to be able to keep Ryan Lindgren. I think Lindgren is going to be a problem for the Rangers this year. Um, he's such a good defenseman, but he's making $3 million right now. That is a sweetheart contract. He could easily be making 6 or 7 And that seems high, but in the marketplace today, let's put it this way. If Truba's making 8 well, where does that put Lindgren, right? So... I'm going to assume that he's going to make somewhere between five. See, he might take a discount to stay with the Rangers. I wouldn't be surprised if he if he stays for five. He might do that just to be with the Rangers. I don't know how that's going to go, but I think the Rangers are kind of like, listen, let's see how the season goes. Let's see if we go on a run, and then we'll see where things are at. And maybe he wins it. If, I mean, if the Rangers, I'm going to throw up in my mouth, the Rangers were to win the cup this year, he might be like, listen, I won a cup with the Rangers, this and that. You know, he might be thinking, I don't care about the money and I'll stay here. Or he's going to say, now I want to make my money because I want a cup. I, I'm not really in, I'm not psychologically in the head of Lindgren to kind of figure that out. But like I said, it also could be the Rangers as, a, as you know, Chris Drury being the GM. He might be thinking to himself, 
you know, we've got younger players that could come up and kind of take his place for cheaper. We don't necessarily need to keep this guy, right? They've got Ty Emerson, uh, Brandon Scanlon, uh, who we just talked about, Zach Jones, right? All those younger defensemen. And they do have to sign Keandre Miller. Not this year, but next year. They got to re-sign Miller from his bridge contract. He's going to look for the big money in that deal. And that could be an 8 over 8. So... I think it's going to be interesting to see what the Rangers do with their defense this summer. How willing are they to rely on the young guys yet? Or are they going to say, we're in a cup window now, we're keeping Lindgren, and we're going to move the younger guys so we can keep this core together? I'm not really sure. And they can trade Lindgren. Urban is right. Because you might be saying, well, if Lindgren's a, a free agent, or he's if his contract ends this summer, how can the Rangers trade him? He's an RFA with arbitration rights, so he is going to be he is going to be under the protection of the Rangers. So it's not like he's a UFA and walks for nothing. So, and maybe that's what they do. Maybe they just go to arbitration and they say, "All right, let's just get this done. Let's hammer out a deal, meet halfway, and that's it." I have to go to the bathroom real quick, guys. I will be right back. Alright, so here we are. We're getting ready for the third period. It should be coming up here very soon. So they're talking about on TNT right now. They think that, and this is Subban. I'm surprised he's going for the Islanders here. But he thinks that the Islanders goal should have counted because of the interference, which we were talking about here earlier. I mean, that is clear interference. Well... So what are you guys thinking for the third period? I'm sticking with my 3-2. I think 3-2 Islanders now because they have the lead, but it, that I wouldn't be surprised if it was 3-2 Rangers the other way. Absolutely not. Would not be surprised. So what is your guys' prediction before puck drop for the third period? Let me know down below. What do you think Favor gets? 8 over 8? I wouldn't be surprised. Um, I love Brock Faber. I mean, talk about one of the young guys in Minnesota that I'm rooting for moving forward. Absolutely Brock Faber. I mean, 
you know, obviously things didn't go so well for Minnesota this year. Nobody really talked about him as much as he probably should have been talked about. But, I mean, when you're, when you're picking up, you know, almost 50 points as a defenseman in your first full NHL season, that's, that's a pretty good hockey player. And I remember in the playoffs last year, he was a reason they were even, like, those final two games he played, he did really well. You know, like, he wasn't a standout or anything, but he looked the best out of most, pretty much any other defenseman on the wild during the playoffs last year. So, Truba and Goudreau are terrible contracts. It happens. Every team has their bad contracts. It just sucks because of the situation with guys like Lindgren and Miller coming up the next two years. The Rangers probably wish they had that extra $11.5 million right now. They're probably like, oh, was Truba really worth that? Ooh, was Barkley Goudreau worth that? It it happens. But that's why being a GM is so difficult. Because if it hits, it hits. And it's a great move. And if it doesn't, you have kind of the, the instant regret. And that's kind of where things are going with that. But And with the two goals by Nelson today, Brock Nelson has now surpassed John Tavares for seventh all time in goals for the Islanders franchise. So that is crazy. So Nelson's been hanging in there. He's been here for a while and uh, seventh all time in Islanders goals, which is crazy. Alright, so the third period is underway, guys. Here we go. Oh, man. Oh, man. There are some Ranger fans complaining that Miller got his stick held by, I think it was Fashing or the other guy in the corner for the Islanders. But those are the little things that's part of the game, right? And if Miller has his body on the player, you don't have to worry about that, right? If you press him against the boards, you don't have to worry about that. I get it, but 
the the refs again have not been great in this game between the the penalty well the goal that should have been right the Islanders might have had a goal there it was technically offside but a we didn't actually see it conclusively they have cameras we don't but why don't you show that footage okay it's the first thing and the second thing you know I really am not a fan of there was a couple times where there was a, a lot of holding back and forth. They're not going to call every holding. It's just they're going to call one bad holding that affects the game. That's where it's going to suck. And I really hope they don't do that because they've been both grabbing at each other back and forth. I'm worried here in the third they're going to call one. If teams, if both of them have been complaining about it, somebody's going to get called. And I'll say I told you so when it happens. Hopefully I'm wrong, but... I'm getting that that sense with the way this game has been going. The Rangers have 13 comeback wins in the third period, which is the most in the National Hockey League. So we'll see. This is this is going to be interesting. I would say the worst part of this game for the Islanders, you know, they had two really bad parts. The first, like, 10 minutes of the first period, the Rangers were dominant. I think they were shooting, out shooting them 7 nothing to start the game. And then the Islanders had that, the four-minute power play, where the Rangers, I think, had three scoring chances, and the Islanders had, like, one, which got turned over. The Islanders got to get through the first five minutes here. This The first five minutes of this third period are huge. No penalties, and... I mean, it's a full 20-minute period, but the first five minutes set the tone. Oh, man. Oh, my God. That got deflected. How did Sorokin save that? Oh my god. And that's the that's the puck battles the Islanders have been winning. That's how they're staying in this game. The Rangers skating circles around them. But the Islanders are winning puck battles when they get the opportunity. There you go, another puck battle won by the Islanders. That's, we'll see. So we're three and a half minutes into the third period. Rangers 25 shots, the Islanders with 20. Rempe with a big hit there. And what's going on, PJ? Our member in the chat. What's going on, PJ? Oh my god. This is oh man, this is so stressful. So obviously kind of what I expected, the Rangers coming out 
with the flamethrowers to start the third period here. And um, the first five minutes, pretty dominant by the Rangers. The Outers have been winning the puck battles, getting the puck out of the zone most of the time. But the Rangers are getting their opportunities here. The Outers got to clean it up. They got to spend some time in the Rangers zone. Because if you're chasing the whole third period, that's when you get tired. That's when you take penalties. And all it takes is that one mistake, that one bad turnover being too conservative. That's how the Islanders are going to lose this game. If they lose it, you got to get the puck out of the zone here. PJ, I wish I could put the Islanders sound, the goal horn on. I wish. I think it's copyrighted. You would have to pay for it. I think there's apps you can use to just do it on my phone, but that's not the same. We'll see. Maybe I'll play around with that a little bit. We'll see. I've considered that in the past. So each team has, when they score, that would be kind of cool. So officially, five minutes into the third, guys. Let me know your predictions. What are your score predictions down below? I would love to see what you guys think. Oh, PJ, we have one of those. So, so if you guys don't know what that is, so the Budweiser goal horn is basically, it'll go off every time your team scores. So you set it, and it'll automatically go off. The problem is, if you're not watching the game, or like you have people over and they don't know, and it just randomly goes off, it is very off-putting. And it's kind of hysterical when people don't know. But I'm sure PJ knows what I'm talking about. I'm sure a couple of you guys probably have some idea of what that is. Another puck battle win for the Islanders. I think that's going to be a TV timeout. Yeah, probably. You didn't miss anything yet, Urban. The Rangers, kind of what we expected. The Rangers starting the third are playing pretty dominant. And um, we'll see how the rest of this game goes. But the Rangers have definitely had the push to start the third period. I mean, honestly, I think the way this game is going, I, I'm still, I like that 3-2 prediction. 3-2, one of these teams. Hopefully it doesn't go to overtime. I don't think either of these teams' fan bases can deal with the heart uh, situation with that today. I know I can't, honestly, but we'll see. If it goes to overtime, it goes to overtime. It is what it is. And in a sense, that would be good for both teams because that way the Rangers could still get their thing and the Islanders can still make the playoffs. The only thing is we're more likely to see an Islander-Ranger playoff series if the Islanders win this game in regulation. That's more so if you're an Islander fan wanting to see the Rangers, you want to win this game. You guys are hysterical. There goes PJ going off. I know PJ's in the chat when he's trolling you guys, but I, th I think Urban knows what he's doing here. He's messing with him. And based off the crowd, it sounded like there was a decent amount of Islander fans there at the Garden. I mean, I've been to a couple games at the Garden when the Islanders are playing. There's a couple fans, but it seemed louder today. So,
Good job by Paul Murray there. What the hell? Shesterkin with an incredible save. Holy shit. Holy shit. What a save. Wow. Oh, and Lindgren took a penalty. No, this is going to kill the Islanders' momentum. Oh, no. I mean, it is a trip, but uh, I don't want a power play. The Islanders are terrible on the power play. Oh, come on. Thoughts on the Coyotes not paying the hotel bill? I didn't even mention that in my videos. PJ, I was talking about this earlier. I have so many videos the next couple days coming out about Utah and, and the Coyotes. I made a video yesterday. I had a video posted today, and I also have one tomorrow. I'm, I got to be honest, I'm squeezing every bit of the juice out of this whole Utah relocation thing. Uh, so I talked about it in those videos a lot. So, Actually, no. The video for tomorrow isn't tomorrow. I think it's going to be Monday's video. Just to break it up a little bit. But the 18th, we expect a full-on confirmation from the NHL. And then again, the formality is going to be the, the, um, the Board of Governors meeting this summer. That's the only difference. They're going to score shorthanded again. Oh my god. The Islanders are so bad on the power play. It is disgusting. Yeah, that was a great save. I know. Yeah, Vinny, that was. Yeah, it does suck for the Coyotes fans. I'm. I can't even imagine what that feels like. I know as an Islander fan, when they went to Brooklyn, I was crushed. I can't imagine them going like that far away. It's tough. Think about the fans that like get tattoos and like change their hair for this team and, and stuff like that. I, that is tough. And we're not going to see a team in Houston, PJ. No teams in Houston. I don't see it. We're going to see, I think in the next expansion, it sounds like it's going to be Atlanta and Arizona before 2030. And what's going on, Grimmers? Thank you for joining us. Got a bunch of people in here. We got a hot chat today. Thank you guys very, very much. So exactly halfway through the power play. And I think the Rangers have more shots than the Islanders here. Yeah, PJ, you have a Flames fan in here. Grimmers is a big Flames fan. Yeah, Urban gets it. He remembers when, when Minnesota, the North Stars, left. Absolutely. The fans that understand, they know. And I think even the fans that don't have the situation with the team leaving, I think even they, to some level, understand. Because then you think about it, like, imagine my team left. Like, that would suck, right? And what's going to happen is the second Arizona leaves, they're going to be looking to put a team right back there. Just like Atlanta, just like Houston, just like Quebec, just like Hartford. All these cities that lose teams, they're automatically, they're, they're trying to put teams back. I think a Rangers power play in the final 10 minutes is going to really break this game. I'm really hoping not, but... Oh, this sucks. I think Grimmer's messing with you guys. I don't think this I don't think today's Grimmer's birthday. 
If you guys watched the beginning of the last stream, you would know what, what Grimmers is capable of. He's a little troll in there too, Grimmers. I know what you're up to. Oh my god. Thoughts on the Lindholm trade? I think we want Lindholm as dog shit. Yeah, Lindholm's been pretty brutal. Yeah. Um, I think the whole thing with Elias Lindholm, it just wasn't a good fit right off the bat. That sucks. I think he's going to do well wherever he goes this summer. I, it's not going to be Vancouver, though. I could, I could tell you pretty certain it's that. He will not be there next season. Yeah, whoever plays the Islanders in the playoffs is going to be miserable. And I think the only team that won't be is Carolina because they just have the Islanders number in the playoffs. Everybody else, I think, is like, please. Like, I think the teams in the Atlantic are like like Boston and Florida. They're probably like, please. They're hoping they win so they get the third spot so they don't have to play them in a wild card, right? So, but at this point, it looks like that. that I mean, actually, that's not true because... The first wild card is going to be one of the Atlantic teams, right? Which still sucks. They have to play Tampa. But then the second wild card is going to be either the Rangers or Hurricanes, which I think at this point is already, like, locked in. So, yeah, I knew it, Grimmers. I knew you were messing with, with them. <laughs> Islanders versus Rangers, I hope it happens. I honestly, PJ, I'm so torn. I don't know if my heart rate can handle that that is gonna be brutal like one way or the other i think it's worse for ranger fans though because let's say they win the president's trophy uh, or even if they don't let's say they they have the season they have right if they win today or they win the next three get one of the next two or three games here they would have the best record in franchise history in terms of wins they've never had 54 wins in a season if they lose to the Islanders in the first round, who barely made the playoffs in the final three games of the season, if if they were to lose to the Islanders in the first round, what would that feel like as a Ranger fan? I think it would actually be worse than an Islander fan. But, I don't know. I guess we'll see how things go. Yeah, PJ, the Ranger fans absolutely fill up UBS Arena for Islander home games, Ranger road games. Yes, yes they do. But I'm looking at the crowd today at the Garden. There's a decent amount of Islander fans today. I wouldn't be surprised if it's like if it's like 30-70 or 40-60. I would not be shocked. So 9.37 left in the third period. Let's see what happens here. Who is going to be able to... I mean, Shesterkin might have made the save of the game today. Um, he's keeping them very much in this game. As much as the Islanders don't look that great in some minutes... Uh, UBS is a nice stadium. It is a really good stadium. I love that stadium. The problem is it's just too far from me. It, it's an hour drive there. It's an, in best case scenario, 45 minutes home. It's, it's brutal. It's, it's not easy to access, you know, parking and the parking situation is a little weird. How old are you Grimmers? I'm going to guess like 16 or 17. I'm not really sure how old you are. I think we've talked about this before, but.
Oh no. Oh! Sorokin. Holy God. See, I don't believe any of you guys. You guys are saying you're 10 years old. PJ, I know you're not 10 years old. PJ is not 10 years old. <laughs> I'm honestly surprised there hasn't been more hitting in this game, just in general. It seems like both teams are much more... They just know what's on the line here, and they don't want to take a stupid penalty. I really hope they don't call anything the rest of the way. There was a questionable call here with Barzell. He kind of fell. I guess it was kind of... They were just... It was just a puck battle. But... I just hope they put the whistles away. Don't call anything stupid now. And you guys keep saying it. You want the Battle of New York in the playoffs. I get it. As an outside fan, like an, an, any other team other than the Islanders and the Rangers, you probably love the idea. But there's so much on the line for Islanders and Ranger fans because whoever loses that game, at least for the Rangers last year, they played the Devils. At least you have the Hudson River. You just don't cross the Hudson River for the for the year. This, it's everybody's intertwined. Islander Rangers between Queens, Brooklyn, Manhattan, Long Island, Suffolk County, Nassau County. There, the lines are, there is no defined lines between Islander and Ranger fans. And um, I think it's going to be a rough summer for whoever loses, honestly. So we'll see. I really hope so, Urban. I hope you're right. Oilers versus Canucks tonight. Yeah, that's going to be a good game. The Oilers, man. I, I know you guys keep saying, Kevin, don't don't puff smoke up Oilers' butts right now. But the Oilers, they've been playing pretty well. I got to admit, when it's there, let's just see what they do in the playoffs, though. It's the typical story. The great season from the Oilers. Great regular season. Can they win in the playoffs? And not get past the first round. Second, third round. They need to get to the conference finals. This this is the expectations of the Edmonton freaking Oilers, right? What's going on, Ricky? No, we love you, Ricky. Vinny, yeah, I, yeah. See, this is what I'm talking about. The Ranger fans, Vinny, he's like, I don't want the Islanders. The Islander fans are like, I don't want the Rangers in the playoffs. It seems like both sides are in agreement. Like, there's enough respect for each fan base where we don't want to play each other. Break, Semi-breakaway for Pellick, and that's going to be a power play for the Islanders. They have to call it. As Panarin, he hooks him, and the Islanders are going to get a power play here with seven minutes left in the third. What a play by Pellick, though. Is that a penalty shot? No, it's not. No way. It's a penalty shot. Holy shit. Penalty shot for Adam Pellick. Oh my god. This is this is horrible. I'm scared. Oh my god. <sighs> Come on, Pellick. <laughs> you didn't even do anything. Jesus. That was brutal. Yeah, PJ, that was brutal. Oh, oh my God.
A little bit of holding there, but they're not calling it. Okay. I'm at 6.20 left to go. So I'm definitely behind you guys a little bit. And I also have a delay on the stream. It's like a 15 or 20 second stream delay too. You'll give me a couple Rick points. I have no idea who that is. Jesus. <laughs> I have no idea who that is, Ricky. Someone icing. Oh my God. This is going to be the most difficult thing ever. Are you a Do Is that Dodgers? I can't tell what that even is. It looks like an LA Dodgers hat, but I can't tell. For a minute, I th always thought it was a Yankee hat, but now I'm looking. It looks like Dodgers, but I don't know for certain. Sean Green. I don't even know who that is. I'm, I don't know, Ricky. Is he on the Dodgers at least? Did I get that right? So 538 left for me in this game. Oh, man. Grimmers, who am I cheering for? Flames versus Oilers. I got too many Flames fans here on the channel. I have to go with the Flames. And the Oilers were giving me so much heat last week. I have to go with the Flames, man. I'm going with the underdog. Come on. Oh, man. The honors cannot get caught here. The Rangers are pushing here. Sorokin with another huge save. 436 left. Whew. Holy God, guys. This is so, this is like insane. Ranger fans are probably freaking out. Islander fans, like this is, I'm sweating right now. I'm literally sweating in this jersey. Oh. That's crazy. Yeah, McDavid has 99 assists and he might not play the rest of the season. But let's be honest, Vinny. Do you think McDavid cares more about the 99 or 100 apples? Or do you think he cares about the cup? I think he's taking the cup every single time without debate so i get it it definitely sucks but how do you feel about patrick wah he's a great he's great for interviews i really like patrick wah i think i was a little bit like this could either go when they brought him in it was either going to go really like it was going to be one of two extremes right like they were either going to make the playoffs and somehow do the unthinkable what they're doing or they were going to like completely tank and fall off i really didn't know how much of a message he would have for the team but it's worked to this point um would i want him back next year at this point yeah i think he's earned the right making the playoff if if they make the playoffs if they make the playoffs I think he's earned the right for next year. And as long as they don't get blasted in the first round, right? If they if they can take a series to six or seven games in the first or second round, I would take that. Just don't get blasted in the playoffs because then it looks like, well, you didn't deserve to make the playoffs if you just get destroyed in the first round. So. And what's going on, hockey guy? Thank you for subscribing to the channel. I don't even know if you're in here, but thank you. 
yeah, I have all these cool little alerts now. So for new subscribers, super chats, or if you're a member, um, you get your little chat, your little uh, card there. So somebody called the timeout, or maybe not. It might have been just during the the TV timeout. Never mind. Thought it was a timeout for a minute. The problem is, I don't think they want a team in Phoenix. I think Phoenix kind of pushed the Coyotes out. The like suburbanite people of Phoenix didn't want them there. What's going on, David Robertson? Thank you for subscribing to the channel. Look at that. In two minutes, we have two subscribers. Hell yeah, guys. Thank you so much. I think Arizona is going to get a team back by 2030. And if it doesn't happen by then, we just might not see one, unfortunately. Oh, that's a tough icing, but okay. Yeah, I think twenty. I think from what I've been hearing, twenty th by twenty thirty, the NHL will have thirty four teams. We're gonna have a new team in Utah, the relocation. And then the two expansions, not Houston, not Kansas City, not Hartford, not Quebec, Atlanta, and Arizona, which I think people will be like, boring. We've already seen that before, but I think that's what we're going to see. And the Rangers tie the game. Panarin. There you go. Off the faceoff. The Islanders couldn't get the puck out on the icing. And the Rangers cash in. Damn. All right. So we, here we go. What did I say in the third, in the second period? I said, there's going to be a three, two game. It looks like it right now. That's a huge goal for the Rangers. Damn. So what's your guys' predictions now? 2-2 two, two game, who gets the game winner, and which team wins it? Let me know down below what you guys think. Did Urban just spoil it? I don't know if I believe him or not. I believe Urban more than, like, PJ or Grimmers. Let's see. Horvat? Let's see. Let's see if he's right. Horvat's not even on the ice yet for me. It's still the Nelson line. Oh, you're predicting. That's your prediction. Okay, okay, okay. I was hoping Horvat would score because he's had a pretty good... He's had a couple great opportunities and couldn't finish it. Sezikis hit the post. Oh, man.
Big save by Shesterkin. All right, so Grimmer's going with Lafreniere, 3-2 Rangers. Urban, I'm going with Urban. I agree with Urban on this. 3-2 Islanders with Horvat getting the goal. And remember Urban last year, everybody was saying how that trade was terrible for the Islanders, right? Look how that's turned out. It's turned out pretty well for them. But that's the Canuck fans. Oh, Zekas was right there. Oh, Jesus. A minute 29 left. Why would Nelson do that? Yo, we got a super chat from Vinny. Thank you so much for the $6 super chat. Thank you so much for that. Or the six euros, whatever that is. Thank you, Vinny. I appreciate that. This is wild. Oh my God. <sighs> 18 seconds left. Let's see. This is wild. Oh my God. Why won't they drop the puck? And there you go. The Rangers are taking the points. So that's it. All right. We have overtime again between the Islanders and the Rangers. This is more of a win for the Rangers just getting to overtime if they want to avoid the Islanders because that point helps them against Carolina. So... And based off how things went last time these teams went to overtime in the stadium series, let's just hope it's quick and painful. The pain is quick and painless for either side. We'll see here. So we, we have our two predictions here, one for each side. I, I agree with Urban. I said it in the second period. 3-2 Islanders, Horvat gets the goal. Rangers win it, 3-2. Alexi Lafreniere, he's been really good this season. A great turnaround for him. That's what we're going with here. So let's see who's right. Is it going to be Grimmers or Urban? Let's see. So thank you for the super chat, Vinny. I really appreciate that. Very, very nice. See, Islanders and Ranger fans, they can be cordial even during a game. Isn't that, isn't that wild? That's crazy, right? I just can't believe we have playoff hockey next week. Like, that is insane. We are so close, guys. Oh. And hopefully my Islanders can get in there.
That's very true, Urban. We are watching playoff hockey right now. Yeah. Whew. Let's see. Oh my God, Miller with a great chance. Oh man. The Rangers are definitely trying to bait the Islanders into a into a line change. Let's see what they do here. Yeah. So the Islanders are going to get the line change. All right. So Nelson and Paul Mary, let's see. They were able to do the magic last game. Let's see. Don't pass it. That's not a good lane. Paul Mary, let's see. Morgan Riley, Mike Riley, oh my god, Mike Riley, I called him Morgan Riley, Jesus, Mike Riley with the puck, so Lafreniere's out there right now, let's see, Pajot, Sezikis for the Islanders with Mike Riley, not Morgan, Mike Riley, The Rangers missed the net. Holy God. Barzell and Horvat. Here we go. Let's see. Minute 31 left. A minute 31, guys. I hope not, Vinny. I hope it's not a shootout. The Islanders are going to lose then. The Islanders do not win shootouts. They do not. My God, Pelk lost the puck. Oh, Horvat lost the puck too. Oh. Minute 
Minute left in OT. Nelson, two on one Islanders. Ryan Pollock. Oh. Oh, man. Panarin coming back. Barzell. What a save. Shesterkin. Uh, he definitely flashed the leather a little bit, but good save. Good save, Shesterkin. Good save. Yeah, if this goes to a shootout, that that's it. The Rangers will will win this game. Yeah, that sucks. That sucks. This game had to go to a shootout, but that sucks. Isles in nine rounds. No way it goes that far. No way. The Rangers are going to score before then. I don't think it's going to go nine rounds. Yeah, the Islander fans know. They're showing the fans. Islander fans know. Shootouts for the Islanders? Not good. This is like worst case scenario for them. I'm going to guess Rangers in three rounds. I hate to say it. I, I just know how the Islanders are in the shootout. They just are not good. So Panarin goes first. Yeah, Sorokin just isn't that good in shootouts either. So the Rangers get the first one. So is it Nelson for the Islanders? Who's oh Paul Mary first? He's got four goals in, he's got four goals in the past four games. So let's see if Paul Mary, he might be the hot hand. Let's see. Hit the post.
So let's see, his advantage adds up. Sorokin had to fight that one. Good save by Sorokin. Nelson. Let's see. Yeah, Urban, I think I, we all know what happens here. So save. So a goal from the Rangers, and that will end this game. We'll see. Tough loss for the Islanders. What, Trocek's going to score, I guess? The Islanders cannot score in the shootout. It is so freaking annoying. So the Rangers get the win. 54th win. It's the most in franchise history. And uh, that's it. Brutal loss for the Islanders still. They got a point. You needed two points today for the Islanders. Damn. Yeah, the Islanders, they don't they used to be good in the shootout. They had a guy Franz Nielsen. He was magic in the shootout. Since then, the Islanders do not win shootouts. They just they don't have the players for it. Yeah, I mean, the Rangers, I mean, this is the thing. This is, and, and this isn't a knock on the Rangers, but these wins, you can't, there's no shootout in in the playoffs. There's no shootout to bail you out against the Islanders. And that's, and I'm not saying that just to be like a dick. I'm being that because it's the truth, right? Like if we saw another grind them out, this is the type of game that could have gone to a second or third overtime, I think. I think most people would agree to that if it went to overtime, if it kept going. But that's regular season hockey. They got shootouts, and the Islanders can't win them. That's it. And that's the thing too. I think there's a there's a much there's a high level of respect between the Islanders and the Rangers, both the teams and the fan bases right now, because they see how good each each team is, right? And, I mean, if they do match up in the playoffs, it is going to be wild. I, I, like I said, I, these regular season games are hard on me. I can't imagine that. But, man, it is going to be wild to see how things transpire the rest of the way. And, you know what? I think this game, the fact the Outers lost, and the fact this game went to overtime, I think really hurt the chances of the Islanders winning this game uh, or seeing each other in the first round. The, the best case scenario would have been the Islanders win this in regulation and they see each other in the playoffs. But now I don't think that's going to happen. I think, I think that's why Ranger fans wanted this game. They want to win the division, right? Potentially home ice against Carolina in the second round. And uh, yeah, we'll see. I don't think Ranger fans want to play the Islanders. Kind of like Vinny said, I think there's definitely that sense of we do not want to play those guys. And that is that is good to hear. And, you know, at the end of the day, you know, special teams for the Islanders hurts them again. You, you can't give up shorthanded goals. And, you know, the Rangers can't didn't get power plays today. And they found a way. Panarin 
scores a goal five on five. That was that was what the Rangers needed. That's it. So that's going to do it for our stream. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Stay tuned. I might do another live stream tonight for, I think it's Boston and Pittsburgh. We'll see how things go. Um, if you guys are interested, let me know down below if you are interested in watching that live stream. Um, so, oh man, and now Ali Desh comes into the chat. What's going on, Ali Desh? You always do this. You always come in right as I'm closing out. It's like you know when I'm about to end a stream. But like I said, I'll be doing a live stream definitely tomorrow. Tomorrow I will be live streaming and then potentially tonight. We'll see how things go. But that's going to do it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Shout out to Vinny with the six euro super chat. David Robertson and Hockey Guy, thank you for subscribing to the channel. Thank you to all of you guys. Urban, Grimmers, Vinny, a Ranger fan in the chat. Got to mention that. Vinny, Ali Desh coming in in the, in the final waning moments. All you guys, thank you so much. And I will see you again next time.